So I've started my base. I made sure that this is at the um, center mark, these first three space died, and then I'm going to put 17 on this side. My number two is in there soaking in some warm water. So I'm going to do this. I'm going to show you the long side and a short side, and then I won't bother you through the whole process of um, weaving the whole thing up. I'll show you a little bit. Remember, rough side you want facing you. Okay, and so then I'm going to put another three. Next to that. And like I say, I tend to I mix them up a little bit. So if I've got blue on one side, then I'll do that um, coral on the other. And you can see some of these tend to want to come out of the base. That's fine. Um, some of them are thinner than others. That's just the way of the beast. When you're doing your um, stakes in your base, be aware that we always put extra in there. And when you look at this one, see that's not a real good straight uh, cut. So I'm going to trim that up a little bit so that it's flush when it goes in. Once again, remember that you want that uh, the rough side up. So right now I've got 3, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. So I'm going to end the same thing with this one. Not a real good cut. Bring this back just a little bit. That's better. So I'm going to trim that up so it's a little bit better flush. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to make sure I've got this spaced out as much as I can. And it doesn't hurt to put something heavy on it to hold it. That's not going to work. Um, how about spoke weight? That'll work. Just while you're weaving it. Okay, hold it down. So normally I would say spray these, but I am not going to say that today because um, I want you to be real conscious with this space dyed reed. It's very intense color, but when you get very intense color, sometimes you get more bleed than I would like, and especially with turquoise. So we can always fix that up with a little bleach, but it's better to not experience it if you don't have to. So I'm going to take one of these pieces, number two, and I'm going to fold it in half. And I'm just going to get this other one out of my way for the moment. So I like to take this and fold it in half. And you never want it completely level, a little bit so that way if you have to add more, um, it's easier to stagger it. Okay, so I'm going to turn this the other way because I don't want to try to push a weave. I want to pull it down, okay? So I'll do a little bit of adjusting here. And I'll go ahead and start here with that loop, okay? Weave right tool is probably a good thing at this point. Stay there. So I'll grab my weave right tool and I'll get going here. So you're going to do just regular twining with two weavers and they're always coming out at you. One, two. You're making a stroke with a guide that's furthest away from the direction you're going. I'm right handed and I weave clockwise. So I'm going to take this guy that's furthest to the left and I'm going to come in front of one stake, behind one stake. I'm going to shift these guys over a little bit. 
And then if I don't feel like I've got it tight enough, I'll use that Weave Right tool and bring it down there a little bit more. So I'm going to do this side just because it's easier to go by sides than worry about um, stakes getting lost, coming out, and you think, what? Why is my count off? Where's that stake? It's supposed to be here, and now it's gone. So the easiest way to do this is do it a side at a time. Get them set up the way they're supposed to be and weave them in. This is at a premium. That's one of the reasons why we're um, doing this bottom base in number two round. So, and then I'm going to put the ones in on the side. Okay, it's holding that down nice for me. And on the side, we have seven on the short side that we're going to twine, okay? So, and the, the, uh, the three dyed are right in the center. So we're going to set those up first. Remember that if you wanted to get technical, you could say, okay, that's about three and three quarters. So I need it at about, I don't know, about right there. Not that critical, but remember we got the rough side up. Like I said, this is going to be tight, the seven on here. So what I'm going to show you is how we can thin this out a little bit. It's pretty easy to get five in here. Seven, well, so this is what we're going to do. We're going to take that and we're going to just give that a little bit of room there. And we're going to put that right on the corner. And we're going to do another one. Same way as we did there. Just thin that up a little bit. Just a little bit more space. So it's a little bit easier. So right now I've got one, two, three, four, five. I just need to put two more on the side here. So once again, I like to put the corner pieces in first. So I want it right on the corner. And is that tight? Yes, it is. But believe it or not, it does work. So, and if it doesn't work, you can always take some of those um, dyed ones out. If you need a little bit more room, and you can thin those out as well. But let's see how I did. So, once I've got it on here, I'm going to go ahead and twine that. Back that up, same thing, we're just going to keep going. Okay. These are going to slide around a little bit on me. Like I said, if you don't feel like you have enough room, you can always take a little bit off these uh, dive ones, and we'll see how we do here. If they're overlapping, that's not going to get it. So we'll see. We'll see how I did. I have to, uh, when I do my next 17, I'll see if I can kind of bring that over a little bit. You can see that, yes, it is tight, but it is doable, okay? So I'm going to go ahead and do the other 17 on this side and the 7 here, and then I'll come back and talk to you. I have gone around twice, and um, one thing I want to show you is uh, how to lock in your base and now I got lucky I could get all the way around with that one piece 
If you don't, if you can't get all the way in, I'm going to show you this just so you'll know it. Let's say your piece isn't long enough. Okay. Oh, we're going to take out a piece here. So, this isn't long enough to finish it. What I'm going to do is dog tail that piece. So I'm going to pull this all the way back. And then I'm going to stick this guy in. So you, it's called pull the dog tail back, stick in the thermometer. Okay. And then you just keep going with that other piece. Now I don't need to do that, but I want to show you that just in case for some reason it's not long enough and you have to piece another piece in. There's always extra for you to do that. I just got lucky this time and it works. So I want to lock this in. So what I want to do is I want to open that up just a little bit and feed that through. Okay, on that one. And then I'm going to do the same thing here. And on this one, since it's a little longer, I'm going to trim it off. And I want to use that weave right and open it up just a little bit so I can thread that underneath it and pull it through. Okay? Okay, so the next thing we're going to do is do a couple rows of weaving. We at least one, and then we're going to put it on the box mold. So I am a big proponent of using some gravity here and some pressure to do my weave. So I'll put that up against on the table so it's already starting to give it some memory. And let's get a weaver and get going. Heard. Okay. So we started out and we're doing the first row here. Just a two two quill. We're using clips to keep everything in place. While we weave this first row, I'm using the table to add some pressure so that it's getting some memory to go up. This is a start stop basket, or start stop weave, sorry. So I'm gonna use quite a few, oops, you can see that, and then it's gotta be replaced. Gonna put him right there for an hour right now. Let's see if I can get away with that. I may not be able to. Um, coming around the corners. Still doing a two-two twill. Using lots of clips. All right, so I've started on my second row. Now, what you want to do on this is you want to step over by one to the right. So if you look here, you'll see that that is over two on our first row. The second row needs to be one to the right of that on starting. It's still two, over two, under two, but you need to start it in the right place. So here's the two stakes. I've just come over by one. And then I'm going to do two and two again. And I am going to... The one thing I did do is I changed sides for the start because you don't want to keep starting in the same place. It gets too bulky that way. So, And you can see, I can tell that I'm on because it gets that stair step look. Step, step. Okay. And if I'm off the weave, it'll show up. Once again, I'm using lots of clips. As I start out here, I won't be using them for long. So, usually if you have an error, it's on the corner. So be aware of that. And we're going to put three rows on here because when you're doing twill, you don't catch each one, each stake, I should say, until you get about three rows. So we will do that. <clears throat> and then we'll get it on the um, mold. So I'm going to come around here and show you this start stop. And then I'll put that third row on there. And then we'll put it on the mold. And so that'll be where we want to start at class. So you have your mold made, and you have your basket on the mold, which means you've had 
at least three rows of weaving before we get to class. That's your jump start. So that is, like I say, if you have an error, it's usually on a corner. So it kind of behooves you to look at it. All right, so, <clears throat> And then I'm going to follow that. This is my over two. And I'm going to follow this just to cover that up uh, until my second set, I think. And I'll just tuck that in so you can't see where I started or where I ended. And then I'm on to the third row. Okay. And... I just have to hold it. Basket on my mold, and I'm tightening it up a little bit to make sure that it's um, tight on the mold. And so what I do is I go around on the row and tighten it up. And then I'm gonna hold those uh, that tension where I want it by using some clips. I feel pretty good about that row. I might have to go down and do some other ones. Let me see what I got here. Oh. The thing that we're going to do is we're going to put uh, some rubber bands on here to hold that from uh, flopping around. This is just a piece of number eight scrap, and I've done a lark's head on it. So I'm going to come around it and then bring it through itself. And then I'm going to do the same thing here. Bring it through itself and lay it on top. Bring it through the loop. Lay it on top. Bring it through the loop. And I'm going to do about four of these, and I think that should work, but I'll check it and see. Bring it on top through the loop. Okay, so all I'm trying to do is keep this on top of this um, from coming off just kind of temporarily until the, the weave holds it on there. But that will make it so much easier. Now you do got to kind of work around that a little bit, but until you get like, oh, uh, maybe six rows. It's just like another pair of hands, okay? So I'm looking at this and it's pretty tight. I might go back and tighten that first row up a little bit, but I'm feeling pretty good about that. So that's where we want to be when we start on Saturday. Is right about here on the mold, tightened up. Okay? So that's your goal for your jump start. 